हाई एवरी वन आई एम अंकिता एंड यू आर वेलकम टू एंकोसाइट इन अ प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव एक्सप्लेन डी एन ए पॉलीमोर्फिजम इन डिटेल्स यू गाइज हैव लाइक दैट वीडियो सो मच टू इंस्पायर मी एंड रिक्वेस्ट मी टू मेक वीडियोज ऑन डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स आई एम ओवर वेम्ड विथ योर रेस्पॉन्सेज एंड रिक्वेस्ट एंड विल ट्राई टू कवर ईच टॉपिक मैंशन बाई यू पीपल One such topic is restriction fragment length polymorphism or RFLP. So, welcome everyone. Today we are going to explain restriction fragment length polymorphism or RFLP as one of the most used laboratory technique to detect DNA polymorphism. If you haven't already watched my video on DNA polymorphism, I am posting the link in the description. Please go through it for better understanding. So, Let's get started. DNA polymorphism can be detected using polymerase chain reaction restriction fragment length polymorphism or PCR RFLP technique. The research design for this technique can be carried out by performing DNA isolation, polymerase chain reaction, restriction fragment length polymorphism which is followed by gel electrophoresis. In a previous video I have elaborately explained pcr technique and i will mention the link in the description so that you can go through it i am explaining rflp technique in this video with result interpretation and will make a separate video on gel electrophoresis later on restriction fragment length polymorphism can be detected by amplifying target dna region followed by restriction enzyme digestion that cleaves the dna at a specific site now what is a restriction enzyme a restriction enzyme is a protein isolated from bacteria that cleaves dna sequences at sequence specific sites it produces dna fragments with known sequences at each end restriction enzyme digestion is not only used in rflp technique but it is also an important process in recombinant dna technology and genetic engineering now let's get straight into an example of restriction enzyme digestion as we can see in this picture there are two different type of restriction digestion that produces dna fragments either with sticky ends or with blunt ends as in this picture a restriction enzyme named ecori can recognize a specific sequence g double a double t c in 5 prime to 3 prime direction and cleaves the dna at g a site producing sticky ends as shown here another restriction enzyme named ecorv recognizes the same g double a double t c sequence in 5 prime to 3 prime direction but cleaves after g a t producing a blunt end thus by restriction enzyme digestion target dna fragments with one restriction site produces two fragments after digestion two restriction sites produce three fragments after digestion and so on Now let's go back to the previous slide. Due to DNA polymorphism, restriction digestion site in a DNA fragment can either abolished or freshly generated. If we look at this picture, the restriction enzyme can cleave at a site having nucleotide sequence G double A double T C. Now this DNA fragment have three restriction site, so after digestion, two fragments of DNA can be obtained. but if one of these site is polymorphic then it will escape restriction enzyme digestion and as there will be two cleavage only one large dna fragment can be obtained and if due to polymorphism one more restriction site is generated then due to digestion at four places we can get three small dna fragments from the same stretch of dna After digestion these fragments of DNA can be detected by gel electrophoresis Now let's look into a practical experiment and interpretation of DNA polymorphism through RFLP I have recently read a paper on vitamin D receptor polymorphism where they use 
PCR RFLP techniques. They look for BSMI polymorphic sequence of vitamin D receptor gene. After genomic DNA isolation, they run gel electrophoresis to be sure about the isolation process. In this picture, isolated DNA is clearly visible. Then, with forward and reverse primer specific for BSMI polymorphic sequence, they perform PCR and ran another course of gel electrophoresis to make sure the DNA is amplified. In this picture, the bands of specific DNA is clearly visible in respective lanes. After PCR, they perform RFLP by a restriction enzyme called BSMI and after digestion, they ran the final gel electrophoresis plate and get the result shown in the third picture. Now, why there is two bands in lens 7 and three bands in lens 2? We all know that we have two copies of each DNA fragments within our genome. In LEN 1, 2, 4, 6 and 8, we have wild type of DNA fragments where no polymorphism is present. Thus, no digestion takes place and only one band at around 350 base pairs which is same as the PCR product has been observed. In case of LEN 2, we have three bands which indicates one copy of gene possesses wild type and another copy has one single polymorphism in it. Therefore, digestion occurs in only one copy of gene. No digestion in wild type copy produces a 350 base pair fragment and a single digestion in polymorphic type produces two bands of around 160 base pair and 190 base pair respectively resulting three bands in lane 2. In case of lane 7, we have two bands which indicate Two copies of gene have similar polymorphism within them. Therefore, digestion occur in both the copies of gene. A single digestion in both the copies produces four bands. Two bands in around 160 base pair and two bands at around 190 base pair respectively, which superimpose on one another, resulting two bands in len 7. That's all for today everyone. If you think the content of the video is really helpful for you, please do like my video and share it with other people so that they can also get benefited from it. And please hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video on genetics. Till then, goodbye.